So with the release of Atomic Blonde, I decided to make this spy week on my channel and do two different ranking videos, but related to some of my favorite spy movie series, two very different spy series, the first one being the Mission Impossible movies, which I did just a couple days ago, and today we are talking about the Jason Bourne movies. You guys requested it, now we are going to talk about it, and I didn't want to just talk about it by myself because I knew I had a buddy of mine that had some passionate, passionate feeling about this series, and one of the movies in particular. So without further delay, go ahead and introduce yourself. Passion. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> this is Cody Leach here. I'm sure you've seen me on a number of Sean's videos. Uh, they we're all in the kind of the small circle of our corner of YouTube. But if you don't recognize me, you can find me at YouTube at Cody Leach, or you can do youtube.com slash Cody Leach. Do a lot of the same things that Sean does. Movie reviews. I also review music and video games on occasion. I do some ranking videos on occasion like this one, some other fun stuff. So come over and check it out. Let's talk some boring. So like I said, before we get started, um, I really do read you guys' comments. So if you guys have some suggestions for series you want me to rank in the future, go ahead and put them down in the comment section. Like I said, one of the reasons that I chose to do this series is because a bunch of you guys kept requesting it. And I was like, hey, we got a spy movie. Let's talk about the Bourne movie. So please go ahead and give us your suggestions. So with all that said, let's just start talking about the Jason Bourne movie, starting with the Bourne identity. And when this movie came out, I was like everyone else, like, oh, this looks pretty cool. I don't know about Matt. Damon is an action star, then I watched it, I loved it, and then they turned it into an incredible trilogy and kind of expanded the lore and some other movies, and I, I just what a series that's just so cool that it came out. It changed the spy genre, did a bunch of really neat things. What's your take on it? Yeah, I'm right there with you. I mean, Matt Damon, when this came out, I can't remember if this movie came out before um, Born Identity, but the talented Mr. Ripley, I think, was my most recent Matt Damon experience. So I'm thinking, okay, Ripley is gonna do an action movie, it's whatever, whatever, I'll watch it. So we rented it and just like you, it was like, what is this? It was like they tapped into yeah. some untapped, like new blood of this spy series. And the whole series as a whole, really, ever since Born Identity just kind of skyrocketed. And now it was like, it reset the stage for what an action movie was. It reset the stage mm -hmm. for what a spy movie was. And even James Bond kind of had to reinvent himself yep. to be born. So, I mean, the movie was right. just, the series as a whole was just a huge splash whenever it came out for us action fans and spy fans. And it wasn't fully in this one, but certainly when the Greengrass film started to, to come about, I mean, it, it really did change the way action movies were shot. And yeah. while those ones did it well, the shaky crank cam, the cut, uh. the cut around stuff uh, that everyone tried to rip off and did horribly, mm -hmm. I mean, it created such a trend that we're having to like reset it now. So, you know, we're getting excited about the John Wicks and the Atomic Blonde style action, like a return to what was before these Bourne movies, very common. That's just how influential these movies were. And very much so, like you said, they changed the James Bond movies because of the Bourne series. And, and I, I guess also, I'm a, kind of a big fan of just the amnesia, memory loss, action spy type movies, which is funny because you've been trying long to kiss on me for not, li <laughs> not liking the long kiss goodnight, which is literally like this premise that on paper I'd go, that looks awesome. And I, I just, I've, I've never liked it when I've actually watched it. I need to watch it again. Maybe we can both watch it again, do a review on it together I'd be awful uh, sometime in the future. So I will put that on my list to, to think about doing that with. Without further delay, let's start talking through all six, not just five, but all six of the Bourne movies. And everybody, put your rankings down in the comment section while we're talking. Go ahead and give us your thoughts on the whole series. And if you've seen the sixth one that everyone forgets about, go ahead and chime in on that one as well. So starting chronologically, we're going to talk through each movie as they came out. So back in 1988, they actually did an adaptation of The Bourne Identity, the, the book, as a made-for-TV movie with Richard Chamberlain as the star of it. And like Brody from Indiana Jones is the guy that, that's on the boat that finds Bourne in the water. And I watched it whenever Jason Bourne came out, and it's, it's really weird to watch because it's very similar to The Bourne Identity in that you can see like the first hour and a half of it kind of goes point by point with the Born Identity while being like a 80s made for TV movie. So mm -hmm. feeling totally different, but kind of being similar. And then there's about an hour where it just goes off in totally different directions. And then the last 20 minutes, it's like the exact same thing as is, is in the, um, um, uh, 
Matt Damon movie. You haven't happened to see it, have you? I have not. I'm getting educated right now. I didn't even know that thing existed. So tell me more. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's three hours long. It's two 90 minute Holy segments. So, so imagine if you took the Born Identity, made it twice as long, had one tenth of the budget, and it was in the 80s. That's what this is. Very and it's as. It has a lot more action than I was expecting. It wasn't nearly as boring as I thought it was going to be, mm-hmm. but still just as 80s TV movie as I thought. And I actually did a review of it on my channel. I don't remember what re- rating I gave it. I don't even know how to rate a movie like that because it's just what it is makes it difficult to review it in a normal sense because it's a low budget made for TV movie. Yeah. So it's 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 if you're into the Bourne series, it's worth one watch just because it's interesting. So cool. anyway, that's our discussion of that one. We'll go ahead and assume that one's on the bottom for our ultimate ranking. From there, we move to The Born Identity, the original one. What's your take on it? This movie was a gigantic surprise for me for the reasons that we were already saying. You know, you put Matt Damon on the front of an action movie and you're like, what, what is this? You know, now we, we, it makes total sense. Matt Damon's almost synonymous with spy and action. But right. Back in the day, it couldn't have been farther from that. I mean, it was like, what is this? So it came out and what impressed me so much about the movie was the pace of it. Because the movie just, once it starts, it never stops. It just moves at this crazy clip. Yeah. As soon as he gets, you know, starts getting into what is going on, you get this amnesia storyline going on. And then he meets, you know, the, the girl that he ends up kind of falling for. And it just goes from action scene to really innovative fight scene with all the really quick moves that was really interesting for the time to really awesome car chases to just I mean action scene after action scene after set piece after set piece and I love this movie like honestly it, people kind of forget about it because they really hail the green grass movies as like the best of the right. series but I honestly love the born identity so much that it, it, it's it's hard to imagine one beating this for me I do have one that beats it but this one is way up there for me um, I think that the movie is just beautifully structured from the beginning to the end everything that you need to cover in this 90 minutes or however long it is gets covered it never lets you breathe it leads into a sequel really nicely without like leaving too much hanging it feels very much yeah. like a concluding storyline where this could have existed on its own if it not, if it didn't turn into a huge franchise but just nothing really negative to say about it other than the fact that the style of the directing of it doesn't quite fit the series as it goes on but in some ways I actually prefer the way that this one is directed because I'm not a fan of the shaky cam and the green grass ones at all Um, so I actually prefer the directing style of this one a little bit but that's the only small like reaching for a negative is that it feels a little bit out of place in the series but I'm a huge fan of it if I was going to rate it from 10 I would give that one a 9.5 Okay. Yeah. So I, I love this movie. Um, and just, and that, that the idea of him kind of having the amnesia and having these skills that he doesn't know that he has and keeps discovering them as he goes along and he's in a diner and he's check, like checking people out. He's like, wait, I know how much that mm-hmm. guy weighs. And like, I love all that type of stuff in that they balanced him out with someone that's just kind of along for the ride in uh, Franca Potenta. I don't actually know how to say her name, but mm-hmm. she was from Run, Lo- Rola, Lo- Run, Lola, Run, a movie. Have you happened to see Run, Lola, Run? I have not. So at the time Born Identity came out, it was a foreign movie and it's like a movie that kind of retells the same thing over and over again. But I knew her from that and I was a big fan of that movie. And a few years after that, she was in a movie called The Prince and the Warrior, Mm -hmm. uh, Princess and the Warrior from the same director. And she was in it as well. So I was like very a pretty big fan of hers at the time this came out. And I thought they played off each other nicely in that he was a guy that just (laughs) needs someone to give him a ride. It's just it made sense to kind of pulled it together and gave him a bit more of a humanity than I think you get in some of the other ones Mm -hmm. because he's on his own. Um, And so that kind of put a a nice layer to it. Uh, Doug Lyman's direction of it, as you said, I prefer his direction to what you get in the future ones just because the the cutting and choppy stuff, I I get what they're going for. I just don't like it. And even if Greengrass can pull it off better than anyone else, doesn't mean I like it still. It's still a style I don't like, just done better than everyone else. I don't like it when I, they do it. Exactly. And so a great director like Doug Lyman handles it nicely. And just even the way the fight scenes are handled in this, at the time it came out, um, 
fight scenes in Hollywood movies were very influenced by Hong Kong cinema and you know, Jet Li's, Jackie Chan's, highly choreographed. And then you saw that going into The Matrix. And then even kind of around the same time, stuff like Underworld, still kind of with the slow-mo, highly stylized. And then out of nowhere, you have the Bourne movies it's just this brutal, like punching, stabbing and pencils in the hand. And um, you're just seeing them do things that you're like, that would really hurt if you did that to someone in the brutality of violence, as opposed to like the choreographed dance. And I, that is a negative. I love the choreographed side of things and the, uh, all of that. This is a great alternative to all that, that I loved huge fan of it for me. I, I might not be as big of a love these ones quite as much as you. So I'd probably only go to a 9.3, so I'm just below you on this one, mm -hmm. kind of where I land on it. Any final thoughts on it? Uh, well, you mentioned the the relationship between Bourne and the, the girl, I forget her name, but one thing that I'll add to you, which is good for me, if anybody that knows my thoughts on movies, I'm not really a big fan of movies that kind of rush relationships. Like you have this guy and now he's in this situation where he's on the run and the world is after him and you get this stranger who's just decides to give up everything to help this person along. I always have problems with those storylines, but this is one of the few times where it works. Like I was, it was a big mm -hmm. criticism for me in Baby Driver, and it really works for you me know. in the Born Identity, where you, they have such good chemistry and they're, the way their characters are written, you really can, you can buy into it much easier than most movies, why she would suddenly get kind of sucked into this new world of Jason Bourne. Right. In, in that it's 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 all subtle. It's not like big flashy things. It's not like he's this super charismatic guy. It's like none of the stuff that would be flashy. It's just two people at a moment in time yeah. um, that just connect well. So say it once again, what was your score for it? Nine point five out of ten. Big fan of that one. I would give it. I would give it a nine point three out of ten. Rotten Tomatoes put this one at an 83%. So pretty good, but not, not mind-blowing great and not the top of the series uh, in regards to Rotten Tomatoes. Next one we're gonna talk about is gonna be the Born Supremacy. What's your take on the Born Supremacy? I've never been the biggest fan of the Born Supremacy. I think that there's things in it that are great. I think like the first 30 minutes are flawless and a great follow-up of the Born Identity. I think that Carl Urban is a really interesting antagonist. I like the character of Pamela Landy, her introduction into it. Um, the new Greengrass style was kind of really hard for me to get into, because especially in this one. Uh, next to the movie that I'm going to really rant on, this one has the worst shaky cam as far as the fight scenes. There's a fight scene with another operative about halfway through the movie that you can't tell what's going on at all. You don't know who's punching who. They look very similar to each other. Until the fight is over and one person is strangling the other, you're like, oh, okay, he won. So um, yeah, there are a lot of the same positives as the other movie. There's some really good car chase sequences. There's some pretty good fight scenes here and there, but not nearly as many or nearly as cool as the first one. But to me, the issue that I've always had with supremacy, despite the fact that I like some of the story directions, I think that Damon, him being kind of the, the darker version of Jason Bourne in this because of the events of the first 30 minutes, um, it drags a little bit for me. It feels very strange that the plot that they go with about these people murder these two people in Berlin and they're going to go so far out of their way to frame Jason Bourne and then go way out of their way to actually find Jason Bourne, which apparently nobody's been able to do in two years, but they can do it in five minutes. And then, um, you know, they get propelled into this big gigantic espionage plot, which seems like there should have been a much easier way to go about it, but they just needed a way to bring Jason Bourne back. Um, and the, the second into the third act, it seems to drag a bit for me, mostly because of the, the flashback storyline that he keeps having trouble remembering where he's murdered somebody and then he realizes that he also murdered their wife and it kind of makes him a little bit more unsympathetic than he was in the first one where he chose not to kill a criminal because there was a kid in the room versus yeah. he just murdered, murdered a woman in cold blood. Um, and so just some small elements about this movie that just never quite sat well with me. It's the only Bourne movie that I have fallen asleep on multiple times trying to rewatch it. So I don't hate the movie. I actually think that it's really good as far as most action movies go, but I've never been as high on this movie as everybody else. I, I gave it an eight out of 10. Uh, yeah. So for me, uh, I struggle to kind of differentiate supremacy and ultimatum. They just mm -hmm. really blend together with me. And the stories with the, what obviously what they do with the two movies are they do that intentionally. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I kind of put them very much on the same sort of level for me as mm -hmm. to where they're at and how I rank them. Um, I, I, I th 
was probably a little bit more invested than Supremacy than in Ultimatum. Um, somewhat, and we'll obviously get into that when we get to that one. But uh, I just appreciated they found a way to give him emotional um, reason to be get back into action and continue this adventure in a way that I didn't like. I didn't really want you to kill off um, mm-hmm. Franca. I guess that's our actress's main or Mar- Mar- Marley. Excuse me. Trying trying to read. I went to the pool, so my eyes are burning at the moment. Uh, <laughs> Mari. <laughs> um, and so they kill her off, which giving a reason for him to go back into action and want to tear them down. I, I always get pretty invested pretty quickly into some of those sorts of revenge stories. Um, mm-hmm. And they found and I think what I like is that they found a way in this one or and I guess both of these two ones that kind of blend together to continue the story. And actually, I care about the mythology that they're building, the backstory of what's going on. And in this one, more so than Ultimate, and feeling like they didn't go so far that I'm like, all right, how, how many more mysteries are we going? Uh, how much more is there to be revealed? And so I just bought into it in this one. Of course, I uh, love Carl Urban. So then him being kind of the, a bad guy in this is a nice change of pace. So I love that about it. As you mentioned, the um, Landy char- character, uh, I thought she added a really nice dynamic of that not everyone's evil. There are people mm-hmm. that are doing bad things because they don't know that they're working with bad people that are worse and kind of all these different elements. And then you have the Brian Coxes who are legitimately bad people. And I think all those different elements just kind of made it, it kind of work for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I really liked it. But it, it, at the same time, like I said, it, this one and Ultimatum just in a lot of ways blend together. And I have to actively try and remember which thing was in which movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, so overall, I'd, I'd probably... I'd probably go uh, 8.5 on this one is where I think I would go. Mm-hmm. Do you have any, any final thoughts on it? No, I mean, that's, I pretty much said my piece on supremacy. I think, I think that it, it's worth watching for sure. Like it's a good sequel and a lot of elements. It just, I've never understood this one. The praise that it's gotten is like better yeah. than born identity and the best of the series. And like everything is so amazing about it. I think that it's a good sequel that has some issues that I don't really I can never really quite get over. So, and so Rotten Tomatoes gives this one an 81%. Wow. That's where this one lands on it. So not nearly as high as the praises. Some people like talk about with this one, uh, Mm -hmm. slightly below identity, uh, but still obviously 81 is a very, very solid number. Yes. Next movie uh, up on the list is going to be born ultimatum. I know you got strong thoughts on this one. What do you got? I love the hell out of this movie. For whatever reason, all of the green grass elements work for me in this one. And I cannot justify why. It just when I watch it, for some reason, it all clicks. I think that this one is it's got really memorable set pieces like the first movie does. Like you have that whole tense scene whenever Jason Bourne is trying to move that reporter throughout the crowd. And he knows that people are trying to kill him. And you see like just him with his little earpiece trying to tell like move now go to left go right that that whole scene is awesome uh, and then you get into the best fight scene in the entire franchise in my opinion whenever he's chasing the operative on the streets uh, you have a really great chase scene on um, bikes and then you also go into a foot chase scene on roofs and then he crashes through the window and then in my opinion that fight scene is just like the the highlight of the entire series um i think that's the coolest and most brutal fight scene that i've seen in quite a while yeah. so i that, that that one scene puts this movie up above born identity slightly for me but i just what's so good about this one to me is that this is one of those few trilogy conclusion chapters that gets everything right as far as wrapping the story up to me like we just got done with war for the planet of the apes and this did a lot of the things that war did it really feels like a bookend to the born identity Uh, it feels like it wraps up everything it needs to wrap up it gives you just enough answers to satisfy you without going too far into the stupid or trying to make some weird you know left turn out of nowhere it literally is just you know the the mystery is that jason Bourne just decided to join this agency, killed a guy in cold blood to prove that he was good for it. And you know, all these different things. I like the fact that he, you know, he gets to take down the, the black Riot program. I think that they really bookended it nice with Julia Stiles character all the way to the final scene when he ends up in the water, which is where he started off in the series. So I really love this movie. Uh, I give it a 9.8 out of 10. So there's very few flaws with this one. Even the, yeah, even the um, even the the little bit of shaky cam here and there just kind of fits the chaotic 
nature of this movie to me. So like I said, for whatever reason, the green grass style to me works really well in Ultimatum when I had issues with it in Supremacy and a movie we'll be talking about here in a little bit. Um, big fan of Supre or, uh, Ultimatum. Yeah, you might have actually convinced me to change my uh, scores and rankings a little bit there. Uh, so you're yeah. very persuasive. So, yeah, so for me, um, some of the uh, – where you talk about kind of the conclusion and landing the ship and tying everything up nice and neatly, mm -hmm. uh, some of that stuff never fully landed for me as well as it did for you. Mm -hmm. And not in a way that I – like it's one of those ones I've never been able to like pinpoint it. It's not like I'd be like, I have a problem with this because th 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 this is so convoluted. It's none of that. I guess it just never emotionally hit me and connected mm -hmm. with me and gave me sat the satisfaction the way it did, say, for, for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, based off its Rotten Tomato scores, many other people as well. But yeah, as you mentioned that, it kind of reminds me that, yeah, there's series bests. There's a bunch of legitimate best moments. That most tense sequence, uh, coolest kind of run through a city foot chasey type thing. Uh, not miss, uh, yeah, not as though there's some better car chases, mm -hmm. I think. But other than that, this one has the best scene of almost all of kind of the cool spy things that you could want in one of these movies. So I think I think he convinced me. I was going back and forth in my head as to where which one was I going to put where and what score was I going to give to him. Um, I still have I still wasn't quite as emotionally satisfied on some of those points as to what you mm -hmm. mentioned before. But I'm going to go over supremacy. I think I'm going to go 8.8 on this one. I think that's where I'm going to land on it. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes, 93% ah. on this one. So it uh, that is a really high score for a third movie in a series. Um, and just in general, that's a great Fair. score. So very cool stuff. Awesome. Moving on from there, the one, the one that's kind of a spinoff in the series, but very much ties in in other mm -hmm. ways, The Bourne Legacy. What's your take on it? Until recently, I actually had a lot higher thoughts on this movie. I was one of the few people that walked out and thought it was actually pretty good. I thought there was definitely some flaws with it, but you know, people were just dogging this movie like crazy when it came out. Like, get out of here. You're not born. Get, where does this crap bring back Matt Damon? Like it was this the worst schlock they've ever seen in their life, and I don't get it at all. Um, yeah. The Born Legacy, to me, was an interesting movie. It was, you have an interesting character who's very different than Jason Bourne and Aaron Cross. You know, he's mm -hmm. not a guy who chose to be in this program because he's an awesome soldier and a trained killer, and he wants to take it further. He's a guy who is just completely useless. He can't pass anything, so they do this experiment to make him basically a superhero. So it was a very different twist on kind of the Born um, storyline. I think that um, Jeremy Renner was really good in the role. I think that uh, even Rachel Wise as kind of his counterpart slash love interest slash partner was really good. I think that the fight scenes are really good in this one. Um, not quite as good as some of the Bourne movies, but definitely serviceable. Um, there's some real other cool elements like the, the operative that's chasing them I thought was kind of a cool little villain and especially the way that they actually take him out was a really interesting way with Rachel Wise literally just kicking him while he's on a motorcycle and he takes himself out and you're just when you see that scene you're like oh god like it's so painful to watch but um as far as the negatives to me the movie feels like it's building to something and leaves it off for the next movie and the reason why that my score has dropped for this recently is because with the release of Jason Bourne, it's very clear that that next movie is probably never going to come. They're probably never going to revisit this character. Yeah. They're probably never going to revisit Jeremy Renner. And it seems like a missed opportunity because I think you could really easily intertwine those two characters into one movie, either a versus movie or a team up mm -hmm. movie. I think it would have been a much better setup for Jason Bourne, but we'll get into that here in a second. Um, so that's why the score and my kind of appreciation for the movie has dropped a little bit over time. I was pretty high on it before but now that I know that this movie is for lack of a better word kind of pointless um, it's it's hard to kind of rewatch it knowing that the things they're building to are probably never going to come it's like a, it's a first right. chapter in a duology or a trilogy that will never come so I give it a 7 out of 10 I think it's much better than people give it credit for it's definitely not better than the first three Bourne movies um, but it's like I said much better than people give it credit for a pretty cool little side story yeah, I, I actually missed this one in the theaters. It's the only one in the series I missed in the theaters, just busy mm -hmm. in life at the time. Um, and so eventually watched it at home. And so I'd heard a lot of the buzz surrounding it. Uh, and to be like, ah, this is not born without born. Why would you even do this? How do you have a born movie without born mm -hmm. in it? So finally watched it. And I guess for me, it was just 
forgettable. Yeah. That was kind of the, just the word that kind of comes out in a bit dull. Mm-hmm. I think it's the one, uh, as best I can recall, it's the one with the least action. I've never mapped that out, but uh, pretty sure this one has significantly less action than the other films. Mm-hmm. And so it just kind of felt like it's, you're not embarrassing yourself with this movie. You're not doing anything that's hurting the lore, mm-hmm. but you're not doing anything that's keeping yeah. me all that interested. There's a couple of sequences that are really cool that I really enjoyed. That was like, man, I love what mm-hmm. you did here. Why didn't you have more of that? Why did like the one where they're there in the house and he's taking mm-hmm. people out. Why don't we have more of that? It kind of ends with a, when you get into the third act kind of chase, you see it and you go, that was cool. Why didn't we have more of that? And that's kind of where, I, I mean, I think all the complaints that you can't have born without born are c- mm-hmm. kind of stupid. Um, you know, maybe that maybe the name should have been something different, but obviously to tie it to the franchise, it makes sense to put born yeah. in the title. But the idea, like the world that they created with all these spies, it makes sense to tell more stories like this. They just told one that they needed to put more pizzazz in it, more that popped, more that caught my yeah. attention. And so for that reason, this one is probably the, the weakest film in the series mm-hmm. for me. Um, not because it's not not because Jason Bourne's not in it, just because it is just forgettable to me. Um, and it didn't have enough action to keep me interested. I'd rather watch any of the other ones more than mm-hmm. this one. Not a terrible movie, just forgettable. So I think I would go... I think I'd go go with a six on this one. So right for me, that's kind of right at that line between whether what I recommend Mm -hmm. it or not. If you like the series, yeah, you should check it out. If you don't like the series, no, you could absolutely skip this one. It's kind of where I would land on it. Did you have any other thoughts? Pretty well covered on that one. All right. And Rotten Tomatoes gives this one a 56 percent. So huge drop from all of the other movies in the series uh, for with this one. And um, I, I, I get it. I, I understand why it would be that low. And people hating on this one, yeah. that's stupid. People being disappointed, I get that. Couldn't have said it better. And that brings us brings us to Jason Bourne, the fifth film in the franchise. <sighs> Did you have any thoughts on this movie? <laughs> If anybody's been following me for any amount of time, uh, this was one of my, like, I think maybe my fourth or fifth video I did was my top and bottom five movies of last summer. I hate this movie. I hate this movie. I, I, I do not, do not understand some of the praise this movie gets. All right, so let's set the stage for Jason Bourne. So after Bourne Ultimatum, especially after Bourne Legacy, everybody's been like beating down Matt Damon's door and Paul Greengrass's door. When are you going to come back to Bourne? When are you going to come back? When are we going to get the fourth chapter? When are we going to get a new trilogy? And every single time they asked both of these guys, their answer was always pretty much the same. It was, we are not returning to this series until we have a story that we cannot live without Mm -hmm. telling. We wrapped up the story so beautifully with Ultimatum. (laughs) We are not coming back until there is a story that we just have to bring to the world. It just has to be told. The world will not be right until this movie exists. What the hell is Jason Bourne? Like, I walked into this and like I was cheering for this movie when I first found out it was coming. I thought the trailers were really good, uh, especially you know, the, the scene that hooked everybody in the trailers was when he's getting ready to do that street fight and walks up and knocks the dude out with one hit. Yeah. And that scene's in the movie, but it's shot from a different angle and loses all impact. Yeah. Um, and this movie is just pointless to me. It, Matt Damon seems like he's asleep the whole movie. Paul Greengrass is at his worst with his shaky cam and with his ridiculous, like, let's film everything chaotic style. I have never once in my life in 27 years felt nauseous from watching a movie until Jason Bourne. I was physically ill when I left the movie after I saw this one. The first time ever. Um, you get the storyline where, you know, it's been 10 years. Jason Bourne, apparently after he takes out the program, no pe- people are no longer chasing him. He's good. He's free. The best thing that he can find to do with himself is to live in the slums and do you know, illegal street fighting. It's like a Rocky five scenario. It's like, really, this is what you built yourself towards. Um, so you get that. Then he gets tied back into, you know, bringing back, coming back into this life and this espionage and this chase with Treadstone and Black Briar, because all of a sudden his father has some kind of secret ties to Black Briar out of nowhere. One of those ridiculous jump in the shark moments. Okay. Now let's, let's chase the mystery with his father. So then you get going 
the fight scene that's in the movie, the few that you have, you can't tell what the hell's going on. You get a few decent car scenes, like the one that's memorable is when he's got that van and he's just like plowing through um, cars on the Vegas Strip, which is decent. You get Tommy Lee Jones, who is half asleep. He, his character is not interesting at all. His motivations aren't really there. He's not an intimidating villain. You get Alicia Vikander coming off of her Oscar win, half awake, really has no personality whatsoever in the movie. She's not intimidating. She's not interesting. She's just flat the entire time. The movie goes through every single beat that we've seen in the first three movies just over and over again. It does nothing new with it. It doesn't convince you that this is enough to bring Jason Bourne back. It doesn't convince you that this is enough to bring the series back after the beautiful ending of Ultimatum. It doesn't convince you that this is going to be interesting enough to follow in another movie. And even at the very end of it, you leave with some kind of a scene where yet again, some CIA operative thinks that they're smarter than Jason Bourne and he outsmarts him again in one of the silliest endings where you're like, this is so obvious where this is going. How does she not see this? And so just the whole movie, mm-hmm. my my mood just dropped with my health. Like it, 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 it's a movie that was so bad that it dropped my health. That's the best way that I could put it. So I can't stand this movie. There's very few things <laughs> that I like about it. I, I know I'm kind of in the minority because people seem to be either on the higher end of the middle road or you have people that think that this is like this great return to form since Ultimatum. Don't agree with it at all. Four out of ten from Cody Leach on Born, uh, Jason Bourne. Woo! Rant over. All right. So for me, um, I, I can't really, I just don't get negative, the negative passion that you mm-hmm. have, but everything you mentioned, mm-hmm. that sounds about right. Especially, I think the one that you said in there was, it's, you go kind of go through the list of things. That was my take when I watched this movie. It was like they had the checklist of born things you have to do in the movie. Mm-hmm. And so to have a good Jason Bourne movie, you got to have him somewhere in life that uh, is interesting where you find him. So he's street mm-hmm. fighting. Check. And then we got to have uh, there's new government agency guys that are up to no good. Check. We got to have a secret about his past. Check. Uh, we got to have a chase scene. Check. We got to have a fight scene. Check. And you just kind of go down this whole list. And that's like how they wrote the script was how do we have each one of the things that are supposed to be in there. And for me, they I mean, they work the best of any of those things. They weren't great. It was all passable Mm -hmm. enough. None of it was as good as before. None of it was as fresh, certainly not as fresh as before. And when it started getting into the stuff with uh, his dad and like, let have one more twist and reveal. It's the exact opposite of what you said about ultimatum with ultimatum. It was like, Oh, we're getting answers that don't feel like, ha ha. Ah, here's what it didn't feel like this tada it felt like it fit in this universe mm-hmm. they were building telling us now no his dad was behind a bunch of this. you just go ooh mm, that i don't think i don't like that that's why are we everyone does that's this is soap opera yeah. where everyone's dad has some secret everything and we're just having to come up with a new twist so how do you have one more twist after all this his dad recruited him mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, I, I, I mean, as for the checklist, a movie with this checklist of things I can enjoy. And the thing for me that makes me kind of go, okay, what if I what was legacy on bottom? Is this one on bottom? I kind of go, if this movie wasn't a born movie, if this was just, um, uh, I don't know. I was going to say Lance Armstrong, but that yeah. would be the stupidest possible the, name. The, the Matt Damon <laughs> Spy Adventures. Spy movie. <laughs> That'd be if he's <laughs> Matt Damon's spy adventures. <laughs> Lance Armstrong. <laughs> oh, something's wrong with me. Um, <laughs> Matt Damon's spy adventures uh, versus the Jeremy Renner spy adventures. This is the one with this checklist that I would enjoy more. If I just went to Redbox and went, hey, what's the, what are these two movies? Checked them both out. This is the one that I would prefer. Mm-hmm. And the things that I hold against this one kind of tie into its place in the franchise would be the biggest issue I'd, I'd have particularly stuff with his dad the checklist on for a movie if you got this car chase I dig it got the fight scene I dig it so I dig most of the stuff they had in there I didn't feel they had as much of the stuff that I dug in legacy so I'd probably get put this one up to 6.5 just such only a mild of mildest of mild recommendations uh, I, I would mm-hmm. give it um, just because I like the checklist yeah. 
Any final well, one thoughts? One thing I forgot to mention too, which kind of frustrated me uh, a lot whenever I first saw this too, being that I was one of the few people that actually liked Born Legacy, I was really disappointed and confused why they kind of ignored that movie completely. It seemed a little bit arrogant. Like, that's yeah. not our story. Forget that stupid side chapter. To me, that would have been a perfect it, setup. And it, and it definitely, definitely felt like that yeah. too. It felt like, ah, oh, those guys did their thing. <laughs> now we're doing the real thing. And even the, the guy that wrote all the previous films, Tony Gilroy, didn't come back for this one. And I don't think that that's coincidental. No, I don't think so either. And it just, to me, that would have made perfect sense as a great setup to bring Bourne back. Mm -hmm. You mean there's another guy out there that's doing stuff and he's having, his, he's having his own struggle and he's got his own problems and there's another program where they're making super soldiers. That would have been brought Bourne back right there. It wouldn't have been 10 years later. It wouldn't have been some weird side story mystery with his father. To me, that would have been mm -hmm. a perfectly sensical way to not only make legacy make sense within the series, but also give perfect reason to bring Bourne back. And they could have had their own Bourne story where, you know, the Bourne legacy stuff is going on in the background or Jeremy Renner still doing things here and there. And maybe they meet at the end of it. And then you have this great tease for another movie where they're fighting alongside each other. And that again, that, even people who don't like Born Legacy, I feel like would have been excited about that by the end of that movie. Oh, cool. Now this guy is cool. Now it makes sense. So that also bothered me a lot when I watched it. I'm like, that's a huge missed opportunity for me. But I don't know. That's that's Hollywood. <laughs> well, it, and, and that that get, would give this movie a unique yeah. angle. As opposed to right now, this movie is just here's the checklist of things that we have in Jason Bourne mm -hmm. movies. And so then we just do, here's the 10 things we have to do. So we did the 10 things we have to do, in which case it just feels like a rehash of everything we've seen before, just 10 years later. Yeah. And it's Matt Damon went to the gym a little bit longer this go round. And then Legacy has its place in that it's a different character and we're seeing a different perspective. And then you would have a new thing in that you've got both of these guys playing off of each other. So there's a new rapport, there's a new relationship, and that just creates new story possibilities of things you can do. And whether that's how you do the fight scenes, where you've got two of these yeah. guys, you can have the two guys working together and strategizing together. You can have a crazy fight scene where one of them's or chasing, where one of them's driving a car while the other one's fighting guys off. There's so many things you could do with that with the story that gives a unique, interesting dynamic to it. It's like, so for example, like the re one of the reasons Die Hard with a Vengeance is so interesting is because you gave Bruce Willis Samuel mm -hmm. L. Jackson to play off each other. And so you can do kind of the same story, but it feels totally different because you put a second person with him. Exactly. Take these two characters, put them on an adventure together. The first 40% of the movie, they think that they're trying to kill each other. And then it becomes like a buddy movie for the rest of it. Boom. We yeah. came up with something more interesting than it Jason Bourne. Itself. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's right there in front of us. Um, and even you could have taken essentially some of the same plot stuff as in this movie and just make it with these two characters and make it interesting. And maybe that's how you tie in the two different like the weird Internet mogul plot line that we just kind of goes off in this other direction in this mm -hmm. movie. Perhaps the way you tie some of this together is that one of these plot lines ties more to Alex and one of them applies more to Jason and then they intertwine. And so these characters intertwine. So suddenly, boom, we've got a more interesting movie than the one that we have right here. Sounds so simple. <laughs> yeah. So I. Uh, Studios, if you're paying attention, we've got way more ideas where that came from. We can pitch them. We can have the pitch ready in tomorrow. We, like, we'll be in your office tomorrow if need be. So anyway, on this one, Rotten Tomatoes gave this one 55%. It's the lowest on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. So okay. uh, you are vindicated. Awesome. I'm not alone in the world. So... All right. So to summarize real quick, walk us through your ranking from worst to the, the worst best. is Jason Bourne. Step up from that is a big step up from that is Bourne Legacy. A little bit above that is Bourne Supremacy. Then you have Bourne Identity up at 9.5 and just slightly above that one at the top. The reigning champion is Bourne Ultimatum. So my ranking is going to be Legacy on the bottom, then Jason Bourne. You convinced me I swapped these two right here. Got Supremacy at number three, Ultimatum at number two, mm -hmm. and I have Identity at uh, number one. 
for me. Cool. Now for Rotten Tomatoes, they have Jason Bourne on the bottom, Bourne Legacy at fourth, Bourne Supremacy at third, Bourne Identity at second, and Bourne Ultimatum on top. So, um, yeah, that's, is that, is that your that's list? That's mine. <laughs> Yeah, you, you line up perfectly with the critics yeah. then. And one final thing real quick. One final one real quick. Uh, I did a poll on my Twitter account. So if you guys don't follow me on Twitter, go ahead and start joining me on t- or follow me on Twitter. What I'm going to start doing before I do these ranking videos is put out a poll or a couple of polls on some of these to get your feedback in to kind of include it in the videos. So I asked you guys. What is the best Bourne movie? I can only put in four options, and there's five of these movies. So I didn't put Legacy on there. So Legacy's tied with the bottom one. Uh, with only two votes out of 40 people that voted, Bourne, or Jason Bourne is on the bottom. Moving up from there, tied for second and third is both Bourne Identity and Bourne Supremacy. And I don't know how many votes they had because I'm not that good at math. And the definitive winner from you guys, the voters on Twitter, At number one was Born Ultimatum. So agreeing once again with you, Cody, and with Rotten Tomatoes, I'm uh, in the wrong here. (laughs) So if you combine, if you combine all of these lists together, mash them up, what do you have? Well, coming in at fourth and fifth places, tied at the bottom will be Jason Bourne with Legacy. At number three will be Supremacy. Number two will be Identity. And number one will be Ultimatum. In other words, Cody, you win today. Ah, you I got redeemed list. for Masters of Movie Trivia. I hold the Jason Bourne ranking crown. Finally, I have beat Sean at something. You said that too soon. You, you just you let up the cat out of the bag, so oh. that hasn't been released yet. Where, where can we find you on the you internet? You can find me at YouTube. You can search Cody Leach. I should be the top person on that list. Um, and you can type in YouTube.com slash Cody Leach channel, and you will also find me. Like I said, I do the same thing that Sean does. I do movie reviews, both new movies and classic movies. I do some music and some video game reviews on occasion. I'll talk some news stories and rant in front of the camera if something really angers me. And I also do some rankings and some top fives on occasion as well so come over and check that out and I'm sure you'll see me and Sean on each other's respective channels in the future plenty of times all right thank you guys so much for watching Cody thank you so much for joining in having fun uh, hearing you get passionate about a couple of these uh, for me the series is a little bit more I guess compressed my highs aren't quite as high as yours and my lows aren't mm. as low but I still love the series um, just not as much hate for one of the movies and not as quite much love for one of the movies as mm-hmm. you have but such a great series though with all that said we would love it if you guys would chime in in the comment section give us your rankings give us your thoughts on the series which one of us is right was it uh, me it seems like i'm probably not in the right uh cody probably the winner on this one uh give us your thoughts we'd love to hear it and it's, if you're one of those guys that has jason Bourne as your top pick or born legacy Please explain it to us. We would love to know. Love, love, love to understand how those ones can be on top. We don't get it. We don't get it at all. So tell us in the comments section. If you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, ranking videos. Hey, like the one you're watching right now. And with that, I love your feedback. So go ahead and tell me in the comment section what series you want me to rank again in the future. Because I don't want to just talk about movies. I want to talk about movies with you. So let's get a lively discussion going on. And as always, thank you so much for watching.